So, good day, criminology students and reviewees. So, today we will discuss on uh, one of these subjects in the area of crime detection investigation, which is specifically the fire protection and arson investigation or the CDIC. In the old curriculum, under the Chad Memorandum Order number 21 series of 2005, the course title of the CDI-6 is known as the Fire Technology and Arson Investigation. But today, in our new curriculum, under the CHED Memorandum Order number 5, series of 2018 as amended, the course title is known as the Fire Protection and Arson Investigation. So this subject, he covers the principles of fire protection, fire technology, and also its behavior. Likewise, it focuses on the fire investigation and the role of the firefighters during the fire suppression and investigation. The laws on destructive arson, including arson investigation and evidence. So this subject also uh, attempts to awaken the awareness of not only criminology students, but also other individuals on the causes and effects of fire in their lives. So, the topics that we are going to discuss are the technology of war, includes the brief history of war, war legend, war religion, the prehistoric uses of war, the early means and two methods of producing war, and lastly, the chemistry of war. So, let's start with the technology of war. So, in the brief history of war, we're in the ability of primitive people or the early people, okay, to use far was very crucial to their development. That every human culture of the recent past is known to have an endless experience with far. And one of the earliest uses of far was to keep them warm, okay, to cook food, and to frighten away predators. So sitting around the far may have helped unite and strengthen family groups. So. So the early people, okay, far uh, brings everyone together in order to unite and strengthen and love each other. So far also enabled our human ancestors to travel out of war and so many other things that need the benefits afforded by far. Okay? And this eventually spread far and its benefits throughout the world. Okay? And yet, okay, has also become a threat to life and property. It's cost to society in terms of people and property damage. Okay? This also poses risk, a great risk and challenges of controlling a fire, the greater challenge of starting a fire, and the threat of wildfires. Okay? And as civilization advanced or developed, okay, people discovered more uses of fire in many ways. So they use fire in order to provide light or furnish light to shape tools and weapons, especially in times of war. And they also use fire in order to generate electricity. The early regions, okay, were in, they often included fire as part of their rituals, okay, reflecting its importance to society. And because of its importance to society, okay, they recognized fire as a symbol of home and family. Okay, in the early myths, where in early people, okay, they focus on first power. Like for example, uh, in the Greek mythology, wherein humans have always worshipped fire because of its awesome power in nature. So let's go to next. Fire legend. So the prehistoric people or the early people may have gained knowledge of fire from observing things in nature, such as lightning. Okay, fire volcanoes and the heat of the sun. Okay? In a Persian literature wherein there's a story of the discovery of fire in a fight of a hero with a dragon. And one of the stones that the hero used as a weapon missed the monster and struck a rock. Okay? So lights shone forth and human beings saw the fire for the first time. So the mythology of nearly all early people contains some account of accidental or supernatural happenings that first revealed far to human beings. And this is where early people regarded far as a true gift of the gods. So let's go to far religion. Okay? Early people 
considered far was sacred because it was so essential to the welfare of the people. Fars also has played in a central role in religion, like for example in the Indo-Iranian Agni, okay, wherein Far has been personified as a god. So they worship Far as a god. So Far worship and sun worship have existence since the early times. And because Far was so hard to produce, okay, the customs became common of keeping a public Far, okay, which was never allowed to die out. So these fars were kept in every village among uh, Egyptians, Persians, okay, Greeks, and the Romans. And one of the outstanding example of the importance of far to the Romans was the temple of Vesta. Vesta was originally the goddess of the earth, and her shine was in every form. And when we, uh, when the religion became an affair of the state. Okay? The temple of Vesta in Rome was erected, okay? uh, was erected in which the sacred fire okay, was kept burning at all times. Okay? So to honor Vesta as the goddess of the earth, the highest priest of the Roman religion okay, periodically, periodically chose six priestess, which he called the Vestal Virgins, wherein the Vestal Virgins are responsible to keep the holy fire. So let's go to the Greek mythology. In the Greek mythology, wherein Prometheus was bestowed with godlike powers when he stole the gods for and gave it to humanity. So thousand years ago, uh, there's a story wherein uh, uh, there's a story uh, told by the uh, people of the ancient Greece, Greece, wherein the Titan had a son named Prometheus. So the Titans were considered as the giant men who ruled the Mount of Olympus. So by the name Prometheus, he was always thinking what might happen the next day and about busy planning on how people in the world would live better and smarter in the future. So instead of living on Olympus mountain, Prometheus went to the people and lived with them. And he saw them living in a caves, okay, shivering in a cold because there was no fire, starving to death and chasing wild animals. Okay, and because of this, Prometheus said to himself, if they only had the fire, okay, they could at least warm themselves and cook their food. So Prometheus went boldly to Zeus. So Zeus was considered as the chief god of the sky and the god of thunder and begged him to give, to give uh, people, okay, to give fire to the people. So they, they might have a little comfort, okay, through the long months of winter. But unfortunately, okay, Zeus decided that he was not going to give it to people because he said that if men had the fire, they might become strong and wise. Besides, fire is a dangerous tool and they are too poor and ignorant. But despite uh, what Zeus has decided, Prometheus said to himself that mankind should have fire. Okay? And because of this thought, Okay, Prometheus stole a uh, fire from Zeus' own lightning bolt, and he called some of the shivering people from the caves, and he built a fire for them, okay, and showed to them on how to warm themselves by fire and on how to use a uh, fire in order for them to cook food. So men and women were warm and happy and thankful to Prometheus okay, for the wonderful gift which he had brought to them. And this is why Prometheus okay, considered as the fire bringer and the god of fire. So let's go to the next. The uses of fire. So hunter-gatherers, okay, people who live by hunting and gathering wild food, made use of fire so that they can remain active after the sunset to protect themselves from predator, to warm themselves, cook, and make better tools. So second, they use... Uh, of fire as a source of light by taking advantage of the glow of wood burning fires to continue their activities, especially inside their dwelling. So they use fire also to enable to make better weapons and tools. And lastly, uh, people learn to control fire by blowing it up at it through the red pipes. Then they use this technique to burn hollows in logs. Okay, logs are the 
uh, part of the trunk or a branch of a tree, they create cradles, cables, and canals. In addition, fire was used in separating most metals from their ores, as well as in forging and shaping metals into useful things. And take note also that the first to use fire on a regular basis are the Homo erectus. So the use of fire enabled them to adapt new environment by providing light, heat, and protection from dangerous animals. So let's go to the next. The early means of producing fire. So the following are the early means of producing fire. So first, the two sticks. Okay? Two sticks is one of the oldest method of starting fires. So this method often takes a lot of time and energy. Okay? It is by rubbing of the two sticks together in order to create friction. Okay? And the friction generates heat. And the heat eventually causes the wood to ignite. So when we say friction, it is the resistance to motion of one object moving relating to another. So second method is the handrail. Handrail is like the two sticks, okay? It is the method of rubbing two pieces of wood together. But handrail is a more efficient method than two sticks. It is by rapidly spinning of a stick of wood against another piece of wood, okay, that can generate enough friction and heat to cause the wood in order to ignite. So another other means of producing fire is the striking flint. So another ancient method of starting fires consists of striking a flint, another piece of flint to produce sparks. So when I say flint, this is a hard stone uh, that produces a spark. Okay, the when at, and when a flint is struck by another flint, okay, it produces a spark. And later, okay, people also use flint and metal to produce sparks, and the spark can ignite the tinder to start a fire. So when we say tinder, it is usually consists of a substance that burns readily, like for example, a wood, paper, or the metal shaving. And lastly, the magnifying glass. Magnifying glass, wherein people have used magnifying glasses and sunlights to light for us since the invention of lenses several thousand years ago. So magnifying glass focuses the, tan, uh, the sunlight on a tinder and the energy of the sunlight hits the tinder until it ignites. So again, the tinder usually uh, a substance that burns readily such as wood or paper. So next, the two methods of producing fire. So there are two methods, okay? friction method and percussion method. In friction method, uh, in this method, the friction will increase or raise the temperature of a combustible material into ignition temperature. So when we say combustible material, it is either a solid, a liquid, or a gas that can be easily ignited and burned. Okay? Like for example, combustible solids such as paper, wood, plastics. Ignition temperature is a temperature at which a flammable material or combustible material will ignite. So example of friction method is the two sticks of wood surrounded by a combustible material rubbed together okay, until the ignition is reached. So I have an example of the friction met part and method. Your hands, the key is, is you're putting a lot more pressure on it than you realize. So I'm actually pushing really hard inward and downward at the same time. And that, that driving force is what's gonna produce the coal. So as you're going, once you see that basically you have smoke coming out of, out of the pile of punk, at that point you can stop, tap any leftover punk on it, and it'll keep building. You can see it's, it's red hot. And then you drop the coal in the nest. Seems counterintuitive, but you want to squeeze that nest and really cradle that coal way down in there. Deep breath. You want to increase the breath hardness as it starts spreading. Now 
That's it. You want to turn it on its side towards the wind. And you got a fire. And that's it. That's, that's friction fire in a nutshell right there. So that is friction fire. It is like hand drill by rapidly spinning a stick of wood. Another uh, uh, wood that can generate an friction and heat to cause the wood in order to ignite and burn. So another percussion method. So percussion method, it is the method that produces a spark to set a kindling fire. So I have an example of a uh, percussion method. Okay. So as you can see in this video, use a petrified wood and a knife that is made by a metal. It produces spark. Get that. Petrified wood. That is petrified wood and a knife made by a metal. So the spark can ignite the tinder to start a fire. Okay? That's a real bird nest. Okay. That's good. So that is an example of a percussion method so another fire may be also generated by using a lens or curved reflector to focus and converge the rays of the sun on combustible materials for example survivor dad here today we're going to start a fire using just a magnifying glass so you can get them just about anywhere you want to start by holding up your magnifying glass to the sun getting a small dot on your tinder once you've got that small dot you just hold it on there hold steady till you get a good amount of embers and there it is so that is an example of magnifying glass the magnifying glass focuses the sunlight on the tinder and the energy of the sunlight hits the tinder until it ignites and burns so let's go to the next the chemistry of fire. So, what is fire? Okay, so to understand fire, we must have a scientific definition of fire consistent with our perception. So, fire is, in some ways, it is like living things. Example of these things is like an animal, okay, wherein uh, both fire and animal require the same elements in order to exist, and each ceases to exist. If any one of these elements is withdrawn. So as the animal needs food, the fire needs fuel. As the animal uh, requires oxygen, the fire requires oxygen. And as the animal uh, requires, um, what do you call this? Requires warmth, okay? The fire requires heat. So therefore, in order to create fire, we must have fuel, oxygen, and heat. So meaning to say, okay, we need these three elements in order to produce fire, okay? The heat, the fuel, and oxygen. So the heat is the most common form of energy measured in temperature, or it is the ignition temperature, okay? It is also a form of energy generated by the transmission of some other form of energy as in combustion or burning. So later we will discuss uh, some of the sources of heat and also the fuel, okay? Fuel is any combustible material, either solid, liquid, or a gas. So example of a solid fuel such as wood, plastics, and fibers, okay? And also oxygen. Oxygen is a colorless, odorless gas and one of the compositions of air. So oxygen uh, in the air, in the surrounding area, is considered as the primary oxidizing agent. And, the tri and, and this triad, as you can see, illustrated by the part triangle, which symbolize in the most basic terms, okay, chemical relationship of a fuel, oxygen, and heat. So that part is the result. Uh, is defined as the result of a chemical reaction between a fuel, heat, and oxygen. So such rapid chemical reaction releases energy in the form of heat and light. 
So fire is a chemical reaction that involves the evolution of light. Okay? It is also defined as the heat and light that comes from the burning substances. So that when the substance burns, heat and light are produced. Okay? It is also the manifestation of a rapid chemical reaction occurring between a combustible matter and an oxidizer. Okay? Take note also, burning is also called combustion. And fire is the common term of the burning process or the combustion of a fuel. Okay? Take, take note also that fire was derived from the Greek word pyra, which means the glowing ember. So let's go to the next. The elements of fire. So there are three elements of fire. As I said earlier, it is the heat, the fuel, and oxygen. So heat, it is a form of energy generated by the transmission of some other form of energy as in combustion or burning. So in physics, it is defined as the uh, transfer of energy of from one part of a substance into another part okay, or body to another by virtue of the difference in temperature. So heat also is the energy necessary to increase the temperature of a fuel. So when the heat comes in contact with the fuel, okay, the fuel will increase the temperature and support the combustion process. So for example, if a fuel is a paper. So when the heat comes in contact with the paper, okay, the paper will increase the temperature of a paper and the energy supports the combustion process. That's why heat also called as the product of combustion that spread the fire. And one of an essential element in converting a fuel into its gaseous state. So, so what are the heat sources? Okay? The first is the open flame. Example of the open flame such as uh, candles, okay? Uh, Bunsen burners or butane burners, okay, or the uh, barbecue grills, okay. Second, electrical circuits, third, sparks, and the all sources of ignition, including friction, okay. Second is fuel. So, what is fuel? Fuel is a uh, the most important element of fire because it is a material or a substance being burned in the combustion process. It is a substance which reacts chemically with oxygen and produces flames. So you may ask, is a paper a fuel? Yes. Okay. A wood a fuel? Yes. Are kerosene, gas okay, a fuel? Yes. Okay. Later we will discuss one by one the different categories and classifications of fuel. Okay. And the most fuel contains carbon along with the combination of hydrogen and oxygen. So fuel, it can be solid, liquid, or gas. Next is oxygen. So the common oxidizing agent is oxygen. It is a colorless, odorless gas and one of the composition of air, which is approximately 21% by volume. So the air is composed of 21% of oxygen there is 78% nitrogen and 1% inert gas. We know that oxygen itself that does not burn, okay? But oxygen generally required for combustion, okay? Because oxygen uh, reacts chemically with the fuel to liberate the chemical energy, okay? And in order to produce fire, there is a requirement of sufficient oxygen. So there is no fire if the oxygen is only 12%. Okay? And in 14%, there is a flash point. So in order to produce flash point, we need 14% of oxygen. So when we say flash point, okay, it is the minimum temperature or the lower temperature or the lowest, I should say, the temperature at which any material will give off vapor in sufficient concentration uh, to form an ignitable mixture with air. So meaning it is the temperature 
at which the material is not hot enough to keep burning but still gives enough vapors to cause a flame to flash okay, across the surface. So the term flash point is used to express the fuel or the condition of a fuel vaporizing whether or not it is vaporizing fast enough to keep burning. So by 16 and to 21% of oxygen, it can produce far point. So far point is a temperature okay, at which the material will give up sufficient or ample vapors to keep burning. So meaning it is the temperature at which the material will give up sufficient vapor to sustain combustion or burning. So there is usually about 5 to 10 uh, degrees difference of a uh, flash point and a far point of most materials. So let's go to next. <clears throat> the combustion and far. So far and combustion are the terms that are often used interchangeably. Okay? Combustion is a self-sustaining chemical reaction, reaction producing energy involving a combustible material and an oxidizing agent that produce more reaction. While far is the chemical reaction or the self-sustaining oxidation producing energy in the form of heat, light, and flame. So with the difference, with combustion, the release energy stays in the reaction to continue it. So once flaming starts, okay, it can only continue when enough heat or energy is produced to cause the continued chain reaction. So when we say chain reaction, it is the series of events that occur in sequence with the results of each individual reaction being added. So in combustion, it may be uh, slow or very fast. Okay? With part, energy is dissipated as the light and heat. Okay? So far is a chemical reaction that involves the evolution of light and heat. So that is... Uh, combustion and fire. So next is combustion and oxidation. So combustion is different from oxidation. So oxidation, it is when a substance reacts with oxygen. Okay? It is a chemical change in which a combustible material and an oxidizing agent react. Okay? So oxidation, it is also actually a deterioration or the aging of materials. So as you can see in this picture, okay, this is an example of an oxidized metal. Okay? So slow oxidation sometimes becomes rapid. Okay? And the rapid oxidation of material is chemically termed as combustion. Okay? But take note further that not all oxidation requires combustion. Okay? And what is combustion? Combustion involves burning to get a substance to react with oxygen. And sometimes, combustion, it is also called as burning. So next, let's go to, again, the three elements of FAR, or commonly known as the FAR triangle, okay? So FAR triangle is a geometrical figure, okay? That diagrams the relationship of the three elements of FAR, okay, such that, if one side of the triangle, okay, or one side is missing, then there is no far triangle, okay? So, uh, meaning far cannot be produced. So, next, let's go to fuel. So, fuel, uh, in a far triangle, okay, fuel is one of the vital elements needed to produce Far, okay? It is the most important part of the triangle because fuel is what burns. Okay? Fuel also is any material or substances capable of burning which chemically reacts with oxygen and flames. So most fuel uh, release energy okay, by burning with oxygen okay, in the air. But some, especially the chemical fuels, they use in rockets. They need 
uh, special um, oxidizers in order to burn. Again, oxidizers are the compounds that contain oxygen. So to burn a fuel, okay, it must be heated to its ignition point. Okay, fuel, it must be solid, liquid, or gas. Okay, so the fuel sources, okay, uh, first is solid. So solid, the molecules are closely packed together. So example of a solid fuel is wood. Okay, and take note, the principal component of a solid fuel is carbon. Okay. So second are the liquid fuel. So liquid fuels are the molecules uh, that are loosely packed. So example of a liquid fuel is kerosene. So third is gas. Okay, gas are the molecules are free, which are free to move. So example of a gas fuel are butane. And the principal component of a uh, gas fuels is hydrocarbon. Okay. And also the liquid fuel, the principal component of liquid fuel is the hydrocarbon, okay? So let's go to uh, classification of combustible material. So these classes of fuel helps to simplify the firefighting methods and techniques, okay? So by knowing also the classes of fire of a certain material, you will be able to make intelligent firefighting decisions. So class A fuels, these are the ordinary combustible materials that are usually made of organic substances such as wood and wood-based products or inorganic substances like rubber, leather, and plastics. So in cases of uh, class A fires, okay, one of the primary extinguishing agent is water. So let's go to the next, okay, class B fuels. So class B fuels are the, uh, it, it is the form of a flammable liquid such as alcohol, okay, including acidic substances, okay, the oil and other chemicals such as those liquid petroleum products. So in combating uh, the cases of class B fires, okay, the flammable liquids must be smothered to deprive them of oxygen. Hence, foam extinguishing uh, extinguishers or the carbon dioxide may be utilized, okay? So classifiers, uh, fuels, I should say. Classy fuels, they are normally the fire-resistant materials. These are the materials uh, used in electrical warnings and other electrical appliances, okay? Examples, the, the motors, the equipment, telephones, uh, telephone switchboard, uh, laptops, gadgets. So in class C, uh, fires, okay? in cases of classic fires, um, it is easily extinguished uh, by the non-conducting agent, okay? such as the carbon dioxide and the chemicals. So the use of water is prohibited. Okay? Why it is prohibited? Because it is usually dangerous because of the risk of electrical shock. Okay? So let's go to class D fires. So the class D part, I fuels, okay, are the combustible metallic substances such as magnesium, titanium, zirconium, sodium, and potassium. So class D fuels are the types of materials that are uh, that burn at the high temperatures and will react violently with water, air, or in other chemicals. Class E fuels. These are the combustible gas such as carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and oxygen. Okay, so that's all for today. Uh, thank you for listening and God bless.